it's my pleasure to introduce our second speaker for today's session, Xiaoche Wang, who's a graduate student in my group at the University of Maryland. Uh, Xiaoche got his bachelor uh, and his master's degree from China Pharmaceutical University um, before coming to the University of Maryland in 2016. And he was actually one of the very first graduate students to join my group when I was first getting started there. And he's been instrumental in helping get in the lab set up and running and has been involved in nearly all of our projects so far. So it's re really a pleasure to introduce him. And he's going to talk to today about just one of the projects he's been working on, which is really geared towards developing new uh, fluorogenic uh, tools for looking at some of the enzymes our lab has been studying. So I'll turn it over to Xiaoche. So thanks for Dr. Pooling's introduction. And I would like to thank the organizers for this meeting. So today I'm gonna talk about our lab's most recent project uh, named Development of Fluorogenic Oligosaccharide Probe Enabling High Throughput Screening for Glycosyl Hydrolase Enzymes. So our lab has been focusing on like understanding and trying to like uh, know the uh, bacterial biofilms in depth. So that is the picture shows here is a uh, bacterial biofilms. It is uh, outside like uh, a layer outside the individual bacterial cells. It works as a protective barrier to protect the bacteria from the harsh environment. Although that it is beneficial for bacteria, but it may be really harmful for human. It could cause chronic infections as well as the contaminations. But uh, right now, people has been like trying to develop like uh, any like uh, biofilm dispersing agent uh, as a new strategy for antibiotics. So the bacterial biofilm formations could be separated into the several steps. First, a single floating bacteria will land on a surface and it starts aggregation and the biofilm outside is gradually developed. And after the biofilm becomes mature, uh, enzymes will step in and cut a little hole onto the biofilm to release the bacteria to start another round of colonization. So in the biofilm, the major components, uh, one of the major components is, is the exopolysaccharide. It's a poly beta 1,6 linked partially acetylated glucosamine. And the only enzymes involved in the dispersing the bell films uh, we know about is the dispersion B. Dispersion B is a 40 kilodalton glycosyl hydrolase. It belongs to family 20. And the active sites of this enzyme locate right in the center of its eight alpha and beta subunits. And it employs a uh, substrate assisted mechanism. The acetyl group on the, uh, on the second position will participate to form this oxygenine intermediate. And a water comes in to, uh, form, to produce the hydrolyzed product. And more interestingly, well, we found this person B is uh, could function as an exo and endo activity, uh, and depending on different substrates. An overlap has been using the site directed site directed mutagenesis to develop like a uh, much more potent uh, this person B mutant. Uh, and as we can see here, after mutant after we got this mutant E two forty eight Q, it demonstrates a much better biofilm dispersing like uh, effect. The EC50 value compared to the wild type is like increased tenfold. Another approach uh, like to find uh, the new biofilm dispersing agent overlap has trying to set up a, a functional based uh, high throughput screening to uh, like the workflow is listed on the left. First, we will do the genome extraction from the environment and we will cut the environment's DNA into the right size and then ligate them into the empty vector. The recombinant, like the uh, plasmid, will transform the, into the uh, E. coli to, to express the target protein. So by using this method, people has developed, has discovered uh, uh, a lot of enzymes like foci in different uh, categories from like really different resources. But the key for this method is how to, uh, you know, it's lies in here, how to distinguish the positive response from the 
some like just the background signals. So it it's must require a like accurate and sensitive probe. So right now the uh, the commercially available and widely used probes are two different kinds. One is the calorimetric probe, the PMP glue neck, and the, the next one is the fluorimetric probe, the four mil glue neck. After the enzyme hydrolysis, it both produce the like uh, the chromogenic chemicals, PMP and the four mil. But these like chemicals themselves are not like gives out enough signal. It has to be introduced a quenching step by a base to uh, to maximize the signals. Also, because of the the chemicals is directly uh, attack, attached to the sugar unit, it sometimes it's not that flexible. It won't fit into the narrow or the shallow of the enzyme active sites. So that results in a low bending affinity and a poor turnover rate. And people have to do it in an endpoint measurement. In 2011, uh, Dr. Mark Neitz lab uh, just developed a better version of the PMP glucnac by introducing a carbamate group in the in the middle to transform it into a PMP glucnac. This, like the the elongated linker, renders the compound like much more flexible. It's just uh, fits fit uh, co it works compatible with the enzymes better. So uh, after like uh, get hydrolyzed, the released uh, the, the calorimetric chemical PNA, it's sort of the pH independent. And we also developed the disaccharide uh, probe uh, of this type of uh, calorimetric probe. And we, uh, we found it's a better turnover rate and we can do real time measurement without quenching step. And we just wonder, can we develop uh, like a fluorogenic probe based on a four mil glucnac by introducing a uh, same cover mate? So that's the, the design strategy for this simple compound. So uh, to get the, uh, the, the AMC glucnac is the synthesis is straightforward, but the challenge is how to achieve high like stereo selectivity. We want beta isomers. And we screen like uh, a lot of different conditions like base and temperature. So what we found here is like only base here play like plays a, a really critical role. As the pKa increase, the alpha selectivity just like goes up. So finally, we choose the, the methylmorphone to give the like the beta isomers as a major product. So after getting the AMC glucnac, the compound one, we first measured its the absorbance to determine uh, what's the best excitation wavelengths. So I see here, like the, the blue line is the compound one, the red line is the AMC, the released chemicals, released chemical by the enzymes. So it has a 20 nanometer red shift. So it's not a, a very huge uh, overlap. It's allow us to safely uh, like excite the the buffer reac the reaction buffer at 380 here to give the emission spectrums. In the emission spectrums, the AMC has a really good and a strong enough like response, but the compound one is just like it's totally almost inactive. And at the 460 nanometer, the it's the the signal intensity of the AMC is almost 80 fold stronger than the and than the parent compound. Another thing very important is the, the AMC, the released uh, chemical has a really good linear relationship between the concentration and the fluorescence intensity. That allows us to measure and, and quantify the enzymatic rates reliably. Next, we tested the AMC and the four mil like over different the pHs. So, you can see here the AMC, like over the pH 4 to 8, it has uh, like identical spectrums, but the 4 mil is the signals just the like, increase. So, this is a comparison graph of the both chemicals. The AMC has a flat line, but the 4 mil has uh, like uh, as goes up as the pH increasing. And after got the compound and determined this optical property, we next choose the beta like uh, acetohexosaminidase F, it's a brev, uh, it's a sp hexosaminidase. It's a well-studied exoglycosidase 
with a relatively relaxed bounce with specificity. It could hydrolyze beta 131416 linkage because it's well studied. So we just choose this enzyme to start off to, to start. So like we first incubate the AMC group neck with the HPX, uh, SP hex and the BSA. So the it shows uh, like the real time fashion and it could be well distinguished between the BSA. And the bit like uh, compare with the AMC group neck and the four mil group neck shows like even at different time points, the AMC group neck gives out a much stronger response. So we just screened the AMC group neck, whether it's a better pro a substrate for like the, the uh, more general glycosidases. So we tested over or like this person B like that is a family 20 enzyme using a substrate assisted mechanism. And the cutinase, that is a recognized cuti bios using a double replacement to give hydrolyze. And the less of them is the uh, uh, specifically catalyzed the peptidoglycan. Jack Bean, it's a like two different iso enzymes of uh, beta hexosaminidase. So over in spite of the differences between this uh, glycosidase, we found the AMC group neck uh, works as uh, like preferential substrates, especially for the dispersion B and the cutinase. This high gives out really like a high aromatic velocity. But at the when we use a full milk group neck at the same concentration, it's just the the aromatic velocity is so low. It's just above the background hydrolysis. Next, we directly apply the AMC group neck into the cell lysate without, like the lysate are, are not like got purified. These are the protein gel of the dispersion B well type and the dispersion B inactive mutants and the empty cell lysate. We first add the dispersion B well type into the empty cell lysate. So it gives out a linear relationship between the, the enzymatic rates and the uh, enzyme added into the reaction. And we can detect as low as the 15 nanomolar dispersion B uh, in the cell lysate. And next, we applied the, uh, the compound directly into the well type and the inactive mutants lysate directly. The, the lowest detection limit is like 10 microgram per mil. That is a total protein concentration. We believe the, the real enzyme presence in the lysate is way more lower than the like 10 microgram per meal. So we demonstrated the AMC group next is a sensitive enough probe. Next, we tested like, uh, we want to do a high super screening. So we first we tested it's like the quality of this high super screening. We use the Z factor as a, to quantify the quality of the HTS. So the Z factor is a matter of the standard deviation over the the means between the positive and the uh, controlled samples. So the Z factor we got is 0 0.773. So it, it falls in this category. It could be regarded as an excellent test. It could well distinguish between the positive samples and the controls. So next we test the AMC group neck, use it as a substrate to measure the inhibitory test we try to expand its applications. So as I talked before, some of the enzymes, especially this person B uses substrate assisted mechanism. So people have developed this like neg, uh, neg cell isolate as a transition state mimic to inhibit this type of, uh, uh, inhibit these enzymes. So we tested the, using the AMC group neck to test the NGT over the this person B. We found we can like, get a really clean and clear graph uh, and get the SA50 value around 100 micromolar. So summary, we designed and got the AMC glucnac works as an optimized version of this parent compound, the four mil glucnac. And we developed a very practical synthesis route with relatively high stereoselectivity. And we found AMC glucnac shows really good optical property as the low background signals and like, you know, it could be quantified easily. And more importantly, it could allow us to do the real time measurement. And we found uh, the compound one proved to be a preferred substrate over different beta hexosaminidase, uh, employing different hydrolysis mechanism. 
and we directly applied the EMC GlueFlag in the HTS screening and the inhibitory test, we all got the real ideal results. So I want to thank Dr. Poulin and our and my co-workers. Special thanks to uh, Alex Peterson and Cristo. They expressed and uh, helped with the test. Uh, thank you.